As you may already know, I'm in my school's marching band, and it's the only thing keeping me from burning my book bag and dropping out if I'm being honest. Cause dude, life is trash when you just wake up, go to school, and go home. And I'm not trash, so I joined the marching band. And it's fun, you know, we'll go to play at football games, travel for competitions, and marching parades. Until this guy came and ruined it. Hey! Got me over here depressed and thinking about all the past band trips we went to and realizing that they were probably my last. So, get some popcorn cause I'm about to tell you the greatest story of all time. So before I talk about the big trips, let me explain what the trips to the football games were like. I don't mean to brag or anything, but <laughs> we're the best band in the land, so whenever we're at a games and another band with some smoke, we just destroy them. So there's this bus rule where we had to ride to another school in complete silence so we could stay focused on remembering the songs and the halftime show. But sitting in silence for a whole bus ride is harder than you think, cause something funny would always happen. Like this one time, the bus driver decided to play the milkshake song. My milkshake brings out a boy to the yard and they're like, it's better than yours, damn right. It's Other things would happen like I would see something out the window and start laughing, or someone would show me a meme and I will think about it for the rest of the ride. So that's pretty much how every trip to the games were like since freshman year. But the real fun was when we actually went to different states to perform. The first band trip I ever went to was in freshman year and we went to Alabama for our competition. All I remember was that we were making a bunch of Alabama jokes the second we crossed the border. Hey, the band director did say this was a band family, right? Yeah. Then that same year we went to North Carolina for another competition. But this time it was an overnight trip so we had to stay there for a few days in a hotel. I remember being so excited for it because I felt like a man now. So I started packing a bunch of random stuff to take with me. Like I brought too many clothes and I even bought my bulky little Xbox 360 which took up like a third of my suitcase. So we got there and did the first part of the competition and made it to the hotel. So each room was allowed only four people in it so I went with me and three of my other friends. Let's call them Luigi, Douglas, and Reese's. So we were in there screwing around just making jokes and stuff, but then we started to smell something coming through the vents, and it kind of smelled like magic leaf, if you know what I mean. And then a few seconds later, we got a knock on the door. So we opened the door and it was one of the chaperones and he was like, hey, do you guys have anything you're not supposed to have? And we were like, no, and we started smiling, which probably made us look more guilty, but it was obvious we didn't have it, like I'm the last person that you would suspect of having magic leaf. I mean, come on, look at me. If I tried to get some, the dealer would look at me and start laughing. <laughs> Anyway, the parent left because he realized it wasn't us, and we got on Tekken on the 360 because that was the only good multiplayer game that I had on there. The next day, we went to the second part of the competition, and we got first place in music. You know, no big deal. We just built like that. Our band is so good that the next year, we got invited to play at the Chicago Thanksgiving Parade that was going to be on TV. When I first heard about this, I was kind of scared because I've heard some things about Chicago. I thought Chief Keef was going to come and shoot up the bus or something. I don't know. They said we had to pack some formal attire because we were going to go to this dance or something. And as I was looking in my closet, I realized that I didn't have any fancy shoes. So I looked to see if my dad had any old ones that would fit. And I found one and put it in my suitcase without looking at the shoe size. Remember this, okay? It becomes a big problem later. So the day of the trip came and I was low-key excited until I remembered that Chicago was 12 hours away. So we sat in this bus for like a whole day and it was cool for like 45 minutes. But things started going south after that. Eventually somebody took a match and blew up the restroom, but luckily I wasn't in the back, so I didn't have to worry about that. Sleeping in the bus was hard because I can't sleep sitting down, and I just started to get bored. We finally got there, and bro, when I walked out of that bus, I almost died because I forgot Chicago was cold, and I wasn't ready for that. We went to this pizza restaurant that had these fat pizza slices, and 70% was tomato sauce, but it was still good though, so I didn't really care. After that, we went to the hotel, and while we were there, we found out that we could call other rooms, and so we started prank calling them, but then we realized we might accidentally call the band director, so we stopped. The next day, we went to this museum and it was pretty cool. Afterwards, they let us go shopping and I figured I'd get myself a souvenir. So I looked around and I saw this cool looking hat and so I bought it. But I should have worn it beforehand because when I put it on, it was too small for my long head and I got depressed. But then something happened that made me completely forget about it. So we were walking back to the hotel and in front of us was this store with a mannequin wearing a scarf at the door. As we were walking by this store, this random dude started walking near the mannequin and then out of nowhere he just stole the scarf and took off. I was in shock because he did it in broad daylight and he didn't even try to be careful about it. That was the first time I've ever witnessed a crime with my own eyeballs. But hey, 
At least that young man is warm now. After that, we went back to the hotel because there was this dance we had to go to with the other bands that were gonna be in the parade. So we got back and started getting dressed into our formal attire. Alright, so remember those shoes that I said that I packed without making sure they actually fit? So yeah, they betrayed me. I put them on and they were three sizes longer than my actual foot. And I started to panic because I looked like I was cosplaying Spongebob with them big work boots. But I had no choice but to wear them. We got into the elevator to go downstairs to where the dance was at. And somebody noticed the combat boots that I had on and looked at me with concern. And I wanted to jump out of the elevator. We got to the dance and I just sat down because I don't dance. And even if I did, I would accidentally stomp somebody's face out with the cinder blocks that were on my toes. The next day was the Thanksgiving parade. We got down to the street where the parade was being held at and started marching down. And Chicago decided it was going to be extra cold that day and I could barely march. When I played my trumpet it felt like I was licking Elsa's earlobe because it was so cold. We went back to the hotel and got ready to go to this boat for the Thanksgiving lunch. After that we took a picture with this large silver jelly bean. So after all that we came back to the hotel room and we came across a new problem. Open the door. You open the door. You're the one with the key. I don't got the key. I thought you had it. <sighs> We lost the key. So we had to go all the way down to the front desk just to ask for another key. Okay, what's your room number? 12. Okay, do you have a form of ID? Do we look like we have an ID? We're 15 years old, man. So after proving to her that we weren't some random strangers, we finally got the key. Alright, so this next part is probably the funniest part of the whole trip. So while we were in our room, Luigi's cousin, let's call him Cone, came in to visit. We didn't know if we were even allowed to let him in since it was past 9 o'clock. But we let him in anyways. So we were all just hanging out and I decided I was going to go brush my teeth. While I was in there, there was a hard knock at the room door and Cone went to see who it was. <gasps> it's a chaperone. So obviously they started panicking and I started panicking from the restroom. Because I thought the chaperone was going to get us in trouble for letting Cone into our room. So before they opened the door for the chaperone, Cone was looking for somewhere to hide and he went inside the closet. Hey, how you guys doing? Pretty good. good. We're doing all right. So he started looking around and he realized that I wasn't there. And he was like, hey, where's Juice at? And when he said my name, I turned that sink right back on and pretended that I was still brushing my teeth. Because I knew that if I came out, I would have started laughing and make us look suspicious. So yeah, he was like, where's Juice at? And Reese's was like, oh, he's just in the restroom brushing his teeth. I assumed the chaperone knew something was up because he started looking around and he was like, are you sure nobody's in here? And I heard Douglas say, nope. Nobody's in here. And then the chaperone started walking toward the closet like he already knew. And he opened it and found Cone just standing there. Get out. Yes, sir. And then the chaperone was like, why did you guys lie to me? And nobody said anything. All except for Reese's. This nigga tried to save himself and just said, technically, I didn't lie to you. All I said was that juice was in the restroom. After that, the chaperone left and I got out of the restroom and we all looked at Reese's in disappointment because he tried to make himself look innocent, even though we were all equally responsible. And then we just went to bed and that was the last day we spent in Chicago. But yeah, Chicago wasn't even as bad as people say it is. The worst thing that happened was the dude stealing a scarf off of a mannequin. The latest two trips we took was in 11th grade last year. On the first trip, he went to Alabama again to compete in the band competition. And this year, me and this other saxophone player, let's call him Sax. So me and Sax had to play a duet on one of the songs on the halftime show in front of a whole audience. We'd done at the football games a bunch of times already, but this was an actual competition and so we couldn't mess it up. On the day of the trip, we got on the buses, but this was probably the worst bus ride out of all of the trips because the Wi-Fi wasn't even working and my data sucked. And so I couldn't watch YouTube videos without it buffering every two seconds. So the only entertainment I had was looking at nature and shit for two hours. We finally got there and we did the halftime show. And guess what? We got first place because we built like that. And on that bus ride home, we all felt like legends. The trip after that was in Orlando, Florida. The thing I was worried about this time was getting eaten by a Florida man. Because apparently that's a thing. So the purpose of this trip was to go to Universal Studios and then do a Battle of the Bands performance. I was so excited for this trip until I remembered that we still had to do that duet. And this time, it was going to be in front of a whole basketball stadium. So if I messed up, I would have to run away and go missing. The bus ride was still kind of long, but not as long as the one to Chicago. I was sitting next to Luigi, and so we passed time by singing this dumb Chris Brown song. You got it, girl. You got it, girl. You, you got, got it, girl. girl. You, you got, got it, girl. girl. I don't wanna play no games, play no games. Ooh, surround, give you my last name. Ooh. We finally got to Universal, and when I walked out of that bus, the sun molested me with its heat. 
Florida is so hot for no reason. Like, we're in the middle of November, but the sun still thought it was June. So we got into our roommate groups that we had to stay in, and since Luigi was in another group, he left, and I went to my group, which had me, Douglas, Reese's, and another friend. Let's call him Bandy. The first ride we went on was the Hulk, and it was pretty cool, but it made me dizzy for a good minute though, so I could barely walk and I felt like I was on crack. We later went to this Harry Potter place, and I felt like a fucking nerd. So we got off of this one ride, and I felt like something was wrong. My stomach started acting a little freaky. Hey, stop that. Later, we came across this super steep roller coaster. At first, we all agreed that we weren't gonna ride it, but then Douglas and Reese's changed their minds and they got on. I was gonna follow them, but I started overthinking and I came to the conclusion that it wasn't worth it. Then we went to this diner nearby and my stomach ache got worse. And after I ate, I felt like Harambe himself was gorilla gripping my intestines. We got to the buses and I think I blacked out a few times from the stomach pain. The second we got to the hotel, I went to the restroom, blew up the restroom, and fell asleep. The next day, we went to the mall for lunch, and we went to Chick-fil-A. And the dude at the counter asked for my name so he could call it out when my order was ready, but I wasn't finna give this random my real name, so I thought it would be funny if I gave him a fake one. And what's your name, sir? My name's Gordon. After that, I went to the van store because I like vans, and I needed a new pair. I was looking for the Yacht Club vans, but they didn't have any for my long feet, so I had to get these mixed match ones instead. But they still look cool, so I didn't really care. After the mall, we left to go to the Battle of the Bands thing. We got to the stadium, and we practiced outside before we got in. Remember the Florida man that I was worried about? Well, he finally decided to show up. This random crackhead started walking around and singing while we were practicing, and I was trying hard not to laugh. But before he could finish his performance, we went inside the stadium. So we got in our seats and the event started. And I'm gonna be completely honest, I wasn't really interested until one of the band's dancers started throwing it back. Eventually, it was our turn to perform, and since we were the last band to play, there was already like a thousand people just looking at us, and I almost died. But thankfully, we did the duet without any problems, and we finished the halftime show and went back to our seats. The next day, we went to this college football game between FAMU and Bethune-Cookman. Now, I don't really care about sports, but I was supporting Bethune-Cookman only because their colors look cooler, and I like their band. As we were getting ready to go, I made the poor decision of wearing my brand new shoes to the game, because for some reason, there was literally sand everywhere and my shoes got dirty in less than two days of me owning them. We got into the stadium and we watched the football game, and during the halftime show, the bands performed. And during Bethune Cookman's performance, they did the most savage thing anyone could do. So you know how marching bands make shapes on the field and stuff? So at the end of the show, they turned around to the fam U side, and then they made a whole middle finger to them. And the best part of it all was that they played it off as a peace sign. After that, the game ended with Bethune Cookman winning, and all the FAMU fans looked depressed in their little green and orange outfits, and I thought that was hilarious. So we left the stadium and started looking for our buses, but then the band director told us some bad news. Alright guys, so apparently one of the buses broke down. Ah. So we had to walk all the way down to where the buses were, and you can imagine how weird it was seeing a hundred high schoolers walking down a sidewalk. By the time we got there, the buses were all good and we went home. Yeah. And that trip was the last one we took before COVID messed it up for all of us. If you're not in your school's marching band, I really recommend joining. Unless the band kids act like this. If they act like this, avoid band at all costs and hide if they approach you. But if they're normal people, then yeah, you should do it. If your life is boring, it'll make it fun. So what are you waiting for? And make sure that when you sign up that you choose trumpet. Because that's the best instrument. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>